Hello and welcome to our family Christmas service from St. Paul's Anglican Church in Uxbridge. This is our second COVID Christmas. We remember that although we are physically distanced from each other and dispersed in our own homes, watching this in front of our computers or on our televisions, we are united together as the body of Christ. And together we celebrate the birth of Christ. This service is a family service geared to children, and yet it's for everyone. So welcome. And I invite you to enter into this holy and sacred time where we remember the birth of Christ and the gift of God's presence among us. Let's take a moment of quiet as we prepare to begin our worship today. We gather because God has something amazing to give us. Jesus, the child of Bethlehem, lying in a manger. So let us go to the stable. Let us go and see what has come to pass. Let us go with the shepherds. Let us go to find the Savior. Let us go with the poor and humble. Let us go to find our King, born in a lowly manger. Let us go with all the world, with those near and far who celebrate this holy day. Come, come, let us worship. Come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord.
We have lit our four Advent candles, signifying God's gift of hope, peace, joy, and love. And today we have lit the center candle, the Christ candle, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Let us pray. God has come into the world. Glory to God in the highest. This is the good news for all people. To us, a Savior is born, who is Christ the Lord. The world is transformed, and things cannot remain the same. It is made new in hope, peace, joy, and love. Source of light, shine in our lives and in your world with your transforming power. We pray through Jesus Christ, whose birth we celebrate this night. Amen. sent your angels to tell shepherds the good news. To you is born this day a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. Help us hear with the shepherds this good news, that we too may glorify and praise you for all that we have seen and heard. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The story begins. The angel appears to Mary. Long ago, about 2,000 years, when King Herod ruled Judea, now part of Israel, God sent the angel Gabriel to a young woman who lived in the northern town of Nazareth. The girl's name was Mary, and she was engaged to marry Joseph. The angel Gabriel said to Mary, Peace be with you. God has blessed you and is pleased with you. Mary was very surprised by this and wondered what the angel meant. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid. God has been very kind to you. You will become pregnant by the Holy Spirit and give birth to a baby boy, and you will call him Jesus. He will be God's own son, and his kingdom will never end. Mary was very afraid, but she trusted God. Let it happen as God chooses, she replied to the angel. Gabriel also told Mary that her cousin Elizabeth, who everyone thought was too old to have children, would have a baby boy whom God had chosen to prepare the way for Jesus. Mary said goodbye to her family and friends and went to visit her cousin Elizabeth and her husband Zechariah. Elizabeth was very happy to see Mary. She knew that Mary had been chosen by God to be the mother of his son. An angel had already told Zechariah that Elizabeth's baby would prepare people to welcome Jesus. He was to be called John. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months, then returned home to Nazareth. The angel appears to Joseph. Joseph was worried when he found out that Mary was expecting a baby before their marriage had taken place. He wondered if he should put off the wedding altogether. Then an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Don't be afraid to have Mary as your wife. The angel explained that Mary had been chosen by God be the mother of his son, and told Joseph that the baby would be named Jesus, which means Savior, because he would save people. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel had told him to do, and he took Mary as his wife. Mary and Joseph journeyed to Bethlehem. At this time, the land where Mary and Joseph lived was part of the Roman Empire. The Roman Emperor Augustus wanted to have a list of all the people in the empire to make sure they paid their taxes. He ordered everyone to return to the town where their families originally came from 
and enter their names in to register there. Mary and Joseph traveled a long way, about 70 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem, because that is where Joseph's family came from. Most people walked, but some lucky people had a donkey to help carry what they needed for the journey. Mary and Joseph traveled very slowly because Mary's baby was due to be born soon. Joseph, Mary, and baby Jesus. When they reached Bethlehem, they had problems finding somewhere to stay. So many people had come to register their names in the census that every house was full, and every bed was taken in all of the guest rooms. The only place to stay that they could find was with the animals. So in the place where the animals slept, Mary gave birth to Jesus, the Son of God, in those days, it was the custom to wrap newborn babies tightly in a long cloth called swaddling clothes. Jesus' bed was the manger that the animals ate their hay from. <laughs> shepherds and the angels. In the heel, hills and fields outside Bethlehem, the shepherds looked after their sheep through the long night. As the new day began, suddenly an angel appeared before them, and the glory of God shone around them. The shepherds were very, very scared. But the angel said, Don't be afraid. I have good news for you and for everyone. Today in Bethlehem, a Savior has been born for you will find the baby lying in a manger. Then many more angels appeared, lighting up the sky. The shepherds heard them praising God, singing, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to everyone on earth. When the angels had gone, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem to see what has happened. So the shepherds went to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph. The baby Jesus was lying in a manger, as they had been told. When they saw him, they told everyone what the angel had said, and everyone who heard the story were astonished. Then the shepherds returned to their sheep, praising God for sending his son to be their savior. When Jesus was born, a brand new bright star appeared in the sky for all the world to see. Thank you. 
news today. The story of Jesus' birth in the stable in Bethlehem, of angels and shepherds, of Mary and Joseph. It isn't just about a story that happened over 2,000 years ago. It's about today, too. Year after year on this most holy day, we come together to praise God and to receive the gift of God's Son, Jesus. May we know God's love for us and appreciate all God has done and continues to do for us. It all began on this holy night. So let us join in the song of the angels. Let us come and adore him, for he is Christ the Lord. Thanks be to God. Having heard the story of Jesus' birth, and remember that the story continues today in us, in our time, we bless our crash, a gift given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Joan and Leo Dichenko. Let's pray. God of Mary and Joseph, of shepherds and animals, bless us as we gaze on this manger scene. Through all the days of Christmas, may these figures tell the story of how they found the Christ in this poor place. Fill us with joy, gentleness, thanksgiving, and peace. This we pray through Christ our Lord, the baby born tonight, in Bethlehem. Amen. I'm happy to share with you tonight a story. It's called Follow That Star, written by Kenneth Opal. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Zach wasn't even there when the angels came. He was down the hill on the other side of the high thicket, grumbling and trying to count sheep in the dark. Worst job in the world, he muttered. Twenty-one. 22, long hours, low wages, 23, 24. If he had looked behind him, he would have seen a halo of light around the hill, blazing like a thousand candles. 
If he had stopped counting for a second and listened, he would have heard the soft music of a thousand wind chimes and oboes. But he didn't turn around. He didn't listen. And he missed the angels. When he got back to the campfire, Ben and Josh weren't there. He found a note by his blanket. It said, we've seen angels. We're going to Bethlehem. Angels, Zach exclaimed. Lazy, that's what they are, leaving me to do all the work. They're probably taking a nice snooze somewhere. Angels, my foot. He sat down against the tree and folded his arms across his chest. He harumphed. He hummed and hawed angels. He didn't believe in angels. He'd certainly never seen any. Then Zach noticed something on the grass, something sparkly and bright, like a fine morning dew. And there it was in the branches of the trees, too, glistening like droplets of ice. He'd heard stories about it, but he never believed it. Angel mist, he answered to himself. Zach began to feel left out. He'd never seen angels. Ben and Josh had seen angels. If it weren't for these silly sheep. He looked off into the distance. Bethlehem was a long way, maybe 10 or 11 miles. It was farther than he'd ever been. Who would look after the sheep? He couldn't leave them alone. They were the silliest sheep in the world. They'd wander off and get into trouble. And there were sheep thieves everywhere. He'd have to take the whole flock with him. Come on, sheep, he called out, running down the hill. We're going to Bethlehem. The night was clear and full of stars. Zach took deep breaths of the crisp, clean air. He felt happy. He was going to Bethlehem to see angels. Maybe he'd even catch up with Ben and Josh, and they could all walk together laughing and telling stories. It wasn't long before Zach was very cold and very tired. He tried to keep all the sheep together, but they were slow and kept straying off the path. They tripped over one another's hoofs. They bonked heads, trying to get in opposite directions. They forgot they were sheep and tried to hop like kangaroos. One of them even climbed up a tree and sat there in the branches, bleating in confusion. These are the silliest sheep in the world, Zach shouted. Up ahead was an inn. Light danced behind the windows, and Zach could hear merry voices spilling out into the night. He went inside to get warm. Where are you off to, they asked. Bethlehem, he said. Ben and Josh saw angels. Angels, they exclaimed. Don't tell us you believed in angels, a man of your age. Zach's face colored. Well, I think I do, he said quietly. It's a long walk to Bethlehem, they said, and it's getting cloudy. Stay here with us. Zach nodded. He wanted to stay. It was warm and cozy at the inn, and he was very tired. But suddenly the doors and windows blew open. The room was filled with wind and the most strange and wonderful smell. Angels, he said. That could only be the smell of angels. He ran outside and gathered his flock. He was going to Bethlehem. If it was the last thing he did, he wanted to see angels. He wondered what they looked like. He could hardly wait to find out. Then Zach stopped and looked around. Oh, great, he grumbled. I'm lost. Hello, said a trembling voice behind him. Is there anyone there? It was a very old man lying in the shadows by the side of the road. I seem to have fallen down, he said. Zach rushed over and lifted the old man to his feet. He weighed hardly anything at all. Thank you very much, said the old man. Now tell me, what's a shepherd doing on a road like this at this hour? I'm trying to get to Bethlehem, Zach told him. 
it's going to take you a long time with all those sheep. I know, sighed Zack. They're the silliest sheep in the world, but what can I do? I've got to take care of them, and I don't want to lose any. Do you know the way to Bethlehem? Why do you want to go to Bethlehem? The old man asked. Angels, said Zack. There are angels there. Don't be ridiculous, the old man said. There's no such thing as angels. Oh, yes, there is, said Zack firmly. I saw angel mist, and when I was at the inn, the windows blew open, and there was a wonderful smell, and... The old man smiled, pointing up at the sky, and said, Follow that star. Zack looked, and shining through a gap in the clouds was a huge glistening star. Zack knew a thing or two about stars. He used them to find his way home in the dark. He could also tell time by the stars, and he'd never seen a star like this before. Thanks, said Zack, but the old man had already disappeared. Zack followed the star through the valley. He followed it over the hill. He made his way by the light of this strange new star along the dusty, windy road through sleepy villages all the way to a shallow stream. When he got to the stream, his sheep wouldn't cross. I forgot, Zack moaned. My sheep don't like water. They're the silliest sheep in the world. He was never going to get to Bethlehem at this rate. Can I help you? said a voice behind him. Who were you? Zack asked. A carpenter, said the man. He wore a leather tool belt around his waist, and he led a mule carrying long pieces of wood. My sheep won't walk through the stream, Zack told him, and there's no bridge in sight. Don't worry, we'll build a bridge, said the man. It won't take long. They hammered and sawed, and in no time at all, Zack and the carpenter had built a little bridge across the stream. Thank you very much, said Zack. Maybe I'll make it to Bethlehem after all. Good luck, said the carpenter. Haven't I seen you somewhere before, Zack asked. There was something familiar about his face. I don't think so, said the carpenter. Remember, follow the star. Zack followed the star, and suddenly a band of thieves sprang out of the shadows. We want your sheep, they yelled, waving their wooden clubs. You don't want these sheep, Zack said. They're the silliest sheep in the world. We still want them, cried the thieves, and they came running at Zack. Clear off, boomed a huge voice from the darkness. It was a tall man in a cloak, waving a long, flashing sword. Run, the thieves yelled in terror, scrambling back into the shadows. Thank you very much, said Zack. Don't mention it, said the man in the cloak. I'm sure I've seen you before, said Zack. It was the eyes, he'd seen those eyes somewhere before. Follow that star, said the man, and he vanished into the night. Zack followed the star. It grew bigger and bigger. He was sure he was almost there. Then he came to a hill. It was so steep that the sheep kept falling down and tumbling back to the bottom. They lay there on their backs, bleating and bawling into the night sky. Zack felt like crying. He sat down on a nearby sheep and clasped his head in his hands. He was never going to get to Bethlehem. Having sheep trouble, a voice asked him. It was a young boy in shabby clothes. My sheep can't get up the hill, Zack told him. I'd carry them on my back if I weren't so tired, and there weren't so many of them. You need a slingshot, said the boy. What? said Zack. We could rig a slingshot between these two trees and fire the sheep to the top of the hill. I've done this kind of thing before. It's worth a try, said Zack. 
The boy stretched a long piece of leather between the trunks of the two trees and pulled it back like a giant slingshot. Jack, Zach shoved in the first sheep. The boy let go and the sheep was catapulted through the air, bleeding in confusion. It landed on all fours at the top of the hill. It works, cried Zach. And one after another, they fired Zach's sheep up the hill. From the hilltop, Zach could see the city of Bethlehem spread out before him. I made it, said Zach to the boy. I couldn't have done it without you. Well, said the boy, do you think we'd forget about you? The others sent me back to find you. Hey, cried Zach, I'm sure I've seen you somewhere before. You've got the same eyes as the old man and the carpenter and the man with the sword. The boy shed his shabby clothes. He spread his wings and soared up into the sky, mist and light trailing from him. A wonderful smell filled the night air. You're an angel, Zach exclaimed. I've seen an angel. That's nothing, laughed the angel. Wait until you see what's in Bethlehem. You mean there's more, asked Zach. Oh, yes, much more, said the angel, his voice like wind chimes and oboes. In a manger in a stable, you'll find which you've come all this way to see. It's something wonderful, something that's going to change the world. How do I find the right stable, Zach asked. But he already knew the answer. He looked up into the sky and saw the stars. All he had to do was follow. What a wonderful story about how Zach encountered angels that he didn't even recognize. Angels that made sure he made it to Bethlehem. Angels that made sure he knew the greatest gift he would receive. The gift of the Christ child lying in a bed of straw in a manger in Bethlehem. May we too follow that star and see the Christ child God has given to us tonight. Amen. O oh God, on this holy night we celebrate your birth among us as a human child. On the first Christmas there was no room at the inn. Protect all those who are homeless, who have no home or warm bed to sleep in tonight. Those who are living under bridges, in abandoned buildings, or in shelters. We pray especially for homeless families, for those with young children, who feel anxiety and worry as they face the uncertainty of what tomorrow will bring. The Messiah came with the clear, with the sign of the star shining in the, in the night. Bring light to those who are sick, who feel pain in mind or body, especially those who are spending Christmas in hospital. We remember all those who continue to be affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and pray with thanksgiving for doctors, nurses, and scientists who continue to work on vaccinations. Jesus was born in a stable, surrounded by the animals. He came as, for, as a savior for all creation. Bring healing and peace to our relationship with the earth. Renew our sense of value of the sacred gift and give us wisdom to treat the environment with respect and care. The angels came with a message of good news in a troubled time. We need your good news in the troubled parts of our own lives, where we experience sadness, grief, loneliness, and isolation. We pray for those weary from all that this pandemic has led to in our, day, in our everyday lives. We pray for continued patience when we are frustrated. We need your good news where there is so much war and hatred. Help people to get along with each other. Help us to not judge others in a way that puts them down. Help our political leaders to work together to break down their barriers that divide. Help us to hold on to the hope for peace. The shepherds were sent to sp spread great joy, the news of what they had seen and heard, with a joy that restores hope and builds up faith, even when we might be facing the shadows of death or experiencing the emotions of grief at the death of family or friends. On this holy day, we remember those we love and who have died or promised the gift of eternal life we join our voices with them and all the angels of heaven who praise now and forever. This night, 
to remember that we are that we too are asked by God to be messengers. We are part of the, of the story that continues today. May we as a church always respond to God with a commitment to share the good news of Jesus through all we do and all we say. God, you have told us that you hear every prayer. We come to you tonight, trusting that you not only hear our prayers, but you also answer our prayers. May we trust in you because you sent us Jesus, the Holy Child of Bethlehem. May we know and believe that you are always with us. Amen. We are grateful to all of you for the offerings you have made to support the ministry of St. Paul's and beyond, especially during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us offer this prayer over the gift of our offerings. Let us pray. Glory to God in the highest heaven. We praise you with our offerings. We give the gift of our offerings, recognizing Jesus as the gift you gave us this day. Thank you, God, for your love wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger, a gift so awesome to share that we can't contain ourselves. May the joy we feel in our hearts overflow in unending praise. In his name we pray. Amen. And as Jesus taught us to pray, we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. A child has been born for us. God's grace has been given to us. From a stable in Bethlehem, our Savior has come. We have seen the glory of the Lord revealed in the face of the Christ child. We can hardly contain our amazement and our excitement. So let's tell the world. Let's treasure the story. Let's ponder it in our hearts. We will glorify God. We will praise God for all that we have heard and seen. Rejoice, my friends, rejoice, because Christ has come. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon each of you, those you love, those you serve, and those you pray for. This holy Christmas night, throughout this COVID-19 pandemic, and always. Amen.
Sing to the Lord a new song. Tell everyone God's amazing miracle. A child has been born who is the Prince of Peace. The light of God's love shines throughout the world. Let's all go now and share the joy we have felt this night with all those we meet. Thank you, God, for all you have done and all you do for us. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 